<laughs> Dragon's End, the final open world meta event in the latest expansion, End of Dragons. It is the most polarizing event we've had in years of the game's existence. The event has spawned two opposing parties. Players who wish to see the event nerfed and players who do not want to see any changes happen. The difficulty of the event has shown the clear contrast of how players are experiencing it. From Twitter posts about how good or bad the experience was, discussions on the opposing views and even taking a break from the argument. Everyone from content creators, top end players, casual players and anyone in between has an opinion on this open world event. We have even had people attempting to boycott by protesting on the map, others who simply reply with get good, have trolled metas by purposely sabotaging phases or even demanding payment to get off the map. So how did we get here? First, let's look at the event and explain how it works. And after that, I will list a few solutions that I personally think could help improve the event. So, Dragon's End is the final map in the End of Dragons expansion. The map requires completing events to progress towards the final event. Players who do complete the events can get up to 10 stacks of a buff called Dragon's End Contributor, which will grant them a 20% hit point and a damage buff. If you complete enough events where the map readiness is high in that area, this also adds a 5% damage buff on voids, which are the mobs mostly found on this map. Now, when the final meta starts, Battle for the Jade Sea, it will begin with three lanes. Each lane must escort their NPC towards the final part of the map. They will kill mobs, take down champion enemies, breaking any wreckage in their path, and then finally the three tags will meet at the Harvest Temple, the final phase to draw out the main boss of this map. Su Wan. Su Wan is by far the most difficult open world boss we have ever seen in Guild Wars 2. The mechanics of this boss are on par with raid difficulty. You must dodge all kinds of her attacks, poison fields, wave stomps, charging attacks, and her tail which mostly stomps on the middle section to punish the leechers. You must also kill the mobs on the platform that can pull and push players around. Avoid her waves and of course break her break bar because not doing so will make you miss out on a small moment to get as much damage as you can. There are also two phases, one which is the wisp phase that happens twice throughout the event. Players who stand in the green circle are turned into orbs and must make their way back up to the platform. This phase has 120 seconds but was recently reduced to 75 seconds. The other phase is splitting up and taking on a few champion bosses in different platforms, killing them and then returning to fight Suwon again. That is the entire event in a quick summary. If you manage to beat this event, you will unlock the collection to start your Siege Turtle. Now here's the thing, ArenaNet has showed the potential of how challenging open world boss fights can be, where not only the mechanics but also preparation before taking on such challenges are needed. There's simply nothing like Dragon's End in any other MMO, at least certainly not in the open world setting. I really commend the company for taking such an approach for this open world boss, one that requires coordination, preparation time, and being punished for not respecting the mechanics of this fight. On one side, you have the players who are absolutely in love with the event and see no reason to make any changes. Because with coordination, having roles filled in each subgroup, a quickness, a lack, a high DPS class, etc. should make this fight easier. And yes, it definitely does. Having a map where all players are finishing events to get that contributor buff, get the 5% damage increase on Dragon's Void, and also being placed into subgroups so that boon distribution is better, and of course having multiple break bar sources from class skills and also electro pulse from the way stations. It can make this fight a walk in the park. It is also a part of the fun to be able to coordinate, give a rousing speech of slaying dragons and having that experience with players. It has a big battle feeling where everyone is rallying up in the map chat or getting on discord voice channels to make callouts. 
But on the other hand, you have the other side of the argument. Players who, while they appreciate the complexity of this fight, and yes, they also love that big battle feeling and getting players organized and ready, feel that it shouldn't have to come to this, having to massively prep for two hours only to fail because of inexperienced players who aren't doing enough DPS, delivering boons, or simply not even bothering with the mechanics of the fight. This is not to say that they are unprepared, because even maps with top-end players have actually failed. The other side is simply pointing out that it shouldn't have to come to this situation. The players who join their map is not in their control, because as another content creator has said, this is a non-consenting raid. And before anyone comments below or tells me on my stream, you can find a dead map and organize with players you know, no, that is not the same thing here. When you form a group for raids, you or the players leading the raid can control who joins the group or not. You can choose to kick who you don't want if it comes to that. You cannot do that in the open world. People can stay on the map. If people are trolling, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it besides report them. So we have two sides here. One where they welcome the challenge, want to teach the players and help them lead a successful run, Love the preparation that is needed for an event as we have seen nothing like this with only Chalk Garant, Dragon Stand, Triple Trouble and Twisted Marionette as the only other bosses in the game that can be compared but even they aren't on the same level that Dragon End is at. And on the other side we have players who do love the event but feel it must be nerfed or changed as it is turning away many players who after 10, 15, 20, 30 plus tries have failed and while it's only been just a little over a week into the latest expansion anyone can see that this is clearly a problem failing it 10 times means over 20 hours on this event now think of players who have attempted it 30 times at this point point. and with all of this you have people on both sides who have taken a tribalistic mantra where on one side people are saying if you can't be bothered to learn this fight then you're simply not good enough and other players on the other side who are just simply not bothered with looking at these mechanics and would rather a trivialized open world boss. So how do we fix this? To me personally, I think the only solutions I would consider are ones that don't affect the fundamentals of this final boss. If ArenaNet were to trivialize the phases to the point where players can simply lay back while others actually get the event done properly, this is not only an insult to the players who enjoy the challenge, but also the company themselves who have pushed the boundaries and created something that is a taste of true open world potential, not only in Guild Wars 2, but in all MMOs that are out there. That is not to say that I am not considering those who don't have the free time to play multiple hours a day. Some players are lucky to even get two hours on certain days, and that's simply due to real life circumstances. The casual player base, for the most part, is what helps keep this game running. So what is an okay compromise? Here are a few from myself and others who have suggested on my stream. Adding 3 minutes to the timer. Most of the runs right now are getting into the final phase where the squads need to split up, kill the 3 champions and return to Suwon for the final 20% phase. The champion phase for most runs right now seems to occur at around 2-3 to three minutes left on the timer. I think adding an extra 3 minutes can help without changing anything but also still giving the event the chance to likely fail. The reason why I do not consider 5 minutes or 10 minutes reasonable fixes is because more players will tend to get lazy since there's plenty of time to lay back and let others finish the event. Give players too long of a time and some will abuse that generous time rendering any need to do any help in the final phases. Another solution is fixate the fight. Right now there's a lot of RNG involved with Su Wan. Sometimes she will have her tail phase up, meaning players have to move across the platform to DPS that down. Sometimes she will instead have more AoE to dodge or simply her moving across platforms without a tail phase. This has caused some runs to be a bit trickier since if you get the absolute worst RNG, even a well-coordinated map can fail the event. Now, I personally like that the fight changes every time you're experiencing it, but this has been one of the problems that have been mentioned. 
a third solution on the wisp phase so when this phase happens you have 75 seconds to get back on the platform the problem is if one player is slow and doesn't make it back in time you have to wait for the full 75 seconds before you can even start the next phase of the fight also while the 75 seconds is going on the main timer on the fight is still ticking so you lose time if players aren't quick on this phase two solutions here one is just stop the main timer when this phase happens so you aren't severely punished or two have it where a certain amount of players finish the phase it's enough to progress the fight now this does affect the fight but it is a solution that i thought could help to keep most of the fundamentals intact the fourth solution this one i'm not too much of a fan of but adding an additional break bar phase so there's another chance at a full dps run before she starts moving like crazy again final solution after a certain amount of failed attempts could be 8 10 20 etc you can unlock the siege turtle collection now this is more of like a participation award kind of fix where it's like oh, okay you fail it five times here have the siege turtle on us on the house but it i mean it is a solution if it is one to consider the other solution that goes with this was others suggesting just give the siege turtle to some other event and remove it from this and probably just keep this event as it is that's i guess another consideration one more solution and this one i personally wouldn't recommend is having an instanced version of this fight i think the preparation in the map players engaging with one another to help complete events getting the damage buffs the escort meta with three npcs and three commanders working together and then finally to conclude in one epic fight it's just a really cool addition in the game and i wouldn't want to see a fight like this just get tossed in an instance where it will have multiple record runs for the first couple weeks and then never touched again so overall the other solutions are what i think can help improve the fight without changing too much of its structure and it still gives the chance that it could likely fail ArenaNet clearly put in a lot of effort in this event and it's amazing to see the future of open world and what it can look like every map in end of dragons has a cool meta each with various mechanics that need to be followed from the Aetherblade Renyek in Suiting Province, to the new Kynang City meta, to the Echo Wild Wilds Gang War and final Jade Mech fight, and finally the Dragon's End defeating Su Wan. As players, at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. We may disagree, we may fight, argue, debate, even agree on the little things, but in the end, we're all passionate about this game that we want to see succeed. So while you may have your opinions, Please understand the other side's circumstance as well. And let's work together to actually improve and not divide ourselves here. If you have any suggestions to improving the fight, your experience on the meta, or anything else you would like to contribute, please drop a comment below. And again, we're all on the same team. It's okay if we don't agree, but it's important that we understand each other. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, comment below. Or be sure to check me on my stream at twitch.tv forward slash guildmm. But until next time, I will see you when I see you.